All right, ladies and gents. So we are doing our geometry lesson 4.1. This is the first lesson from our chapter four. Okay. And we are going to be talking about translations. Okay. Throughout this chapter, we will talk about translations. We will talk about reflections. We will talk about rotations. We will also talk about dilations. These are all different types of transformations that we can do to points or objects on a coordinate plane. Okay. Our objective for today's lesson is I will be able to perform translations and compositions of translations with at least 80% accuracy. Okay. Which means the goal is that you are earning at least an, an 80%. Okay, so that's either a four out of five or an eight out of 10 on your warm or your exit slip, sorry, to show that you understood how to complete translations. Okay, again, reminder guys, I do have tutoring on Thursdays during eighth period from 2.15 to 3.15. I look forward to any of you joining me during that time to clarify any misunderstandings. But specifically, this Thursday, if you want to retake your chapter three test, okay, if you want to retake your chapter three test, this is your last chance to do that, okay, for chapter three. If you wanna retake your chapter three test, this Thursday will be the last chance to do that. So please make sure you think about that. Okay. When you are done writing down your lesson objective, please give me a yes in the participants window to show me that you are ready to move forward. Give me a yes in the participants window once you have written down your objective. Um, Ms. K? Yes. Is this a new packet of notes that we're supposed to pick up? No, this should be a continuation of the packet of notes you picked up last time. It, it, uh, it's a, it should be in the same packet that you got for lessons two, three, two and three. It should be a continuation. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay, ladies and gents, I'm still waiting for yeses from many of you. Waiting for confirmation that we are ready to move forward. From Bethany, Callie, Denise, Gabriel, Thank you, Mario. Harmony, Joe, uh, Kebra, Leanne, Yoreli, you, Mario, Michael, and Samson. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Leanne. All right. Thank you to all of you that went ahead and gave me those yeses to move forward. 
Um, those of you that did it, hopefully you are ready and just forgot how to put a yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know how else to to respond to that. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm shooting them a message. Ah, thank you. I'm just taking them down. Uh, who's not fully actively participating for my records. And who is? All right, very good. Um, okay, so let's get started. So with translations, the first thing we need to talk about is something called a vector, okay? Um, so you might remember vector it, from uh, Despicable Me. He was the villain in the first one. Um, and hopefully this will help you understand more of like, if you learn some of this terminology and then you go back and watch the uh, the parts where he talks about himself, it might make more sense uh, now that you kind of know the terminology of it. Um, but there's a reason why he calls himself Vector and he, he explains it to his dad, the bank dude. Um, but either way, <laughs> a vector okay, is a quantity. It is a quantity that has both direction okay, and magnitude. Okay. And magnitude is also another word for size. So a vector is a quantity. Okay, that has both direction and magnitude, AKA side. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that a vector tells us which way to move. Okay, that's our direction. So which way could be right or left or up and down or up or down, okay? So it, could t give us, it gives us direction and it also tells us how much to move. Okay, so which way to move? and how much to move. That's what it means by direction and magnitude, okay? So which way and how much? Okay, it is represented in the coordinate plane by an arrow. Okay, drawn from one point to another. So if we take a look at this vector here, this is vector PQ, and we start at P and we go to Q, and that would be vector PQ there. It looks a little bit like a ray, okay? But it gives us our, our direction, and our magnitude. So it, it'll tell us go five units, right? How much, which direction to the right. So five units to the right and then go three units up. Okay, so again, which way and how much. Now we have some terminology to get down here, okay? So in this diagram, we are shown an initial point and a terminal point. Okay, the initial point is the starting point. The terminal point is the ending point. These are words that you should have heard by now. Initial, terminal, right? Start and stop, essentially. Start and end. So in this vector here, because the arrow is going toward the Q, and that's where the arrow is, that's going to be our terminal point. That means our starting point will be P. So we start at P and we go toward Q, okay? And the name of this vector therefore will be called P, Q, but to show that it is a vector, we have to write the symbol of a vector. And the symbol of a vector is a line with a little hook. So I wanna zoom in on that. Okay, look at that symbol right there, okay? It's like half an arrow. Right, I don't have this side of the arrow. I only have this side of the arrow going upward. 
So PQ where the half arrow is above the terminal point. So your vector is always gonna start with your initial point and end with your terminal point. So vector PQ, even if it's going in, in, a, in a different direction, it doesn't matter. It's initial and then terminal, and then you put your vector symbol above it to show that it's a vector. Okay, because if you just put PQ, I don't know what you're talking about. You could be talking about a line or a segment or a ray um, or a vector for all I know, right? And we read this as vector PQ. Okay. Now, each vector has two components in it. It has a horizontal component and it has a vertical component. Okay, the horizontal component tells us which way to move horizontally, so right or left. Okay, I'm going to write that up here, right or left. The vertical component, okay, vertical lines are this way, right? So the vertical component tells us how to move up or down. So in this case, our horizontal component in our vector PQ will be five. It's a positive five because we're moving five to the right. Okay, and our vertical component for vector PQ here is a positive three because we are moving three up. So the sign of your component tells us which way you are moving. Okay. Now, once we know our horizontal component and our vertical component, many times you are asked to write your vector in component form. And component form Okay, of a vector combines the horizontal and the vertical components. And you're gonna have to be really careful because it looks a lot like a point. Okay, it looks a lot like a point, like an X, Y, okay? But there's one major difference and that is what goes around the numbers. So if we take our, our horizontal and our vertical components, our horizontal component goes first, and then we have a comma, okay? And then we have our vertical component. So it'll be five comma three, horizontal comma vertical, but we don't put parentheses around it like a point, okay? We put like, they look like greater than and less than symbols. We put V's, sideways V's around it. So it's gonna look like this and like this. So this is gonna be your vector or your component form, okay? Your vector in com component form here. And it's important when you see these right here, it's important to know that this is not a point, okay? This is component form. So the point, if it was a point, it would have parentheses around it, not these Vs, okay? Now the horizontal component and the vertical component, they have general representations, okay? Um, H is the horizontal component usually. K is our vertical component. So our vector, is usually written in our component form and it's usually of the form H comma K. Okay. And once again, it's important to remember this is not a point. This tells you how to move. This tells you how much to move and in what direction, right or left, 
And this tells you how much to move and in what direction up or down. Okay. So now that we have a bit of information about vectors, okay, you're gonna have to make sure you remember this guy. That's gonna be important, okay? Now let's talk about transformations, okay? Transformations, a transformation is a function that moves or changes a figure in some way to make a new figure called the image. Okay, so the image is the new figure made from the original, which is called the pre-image. Okay, so we have the pre-image and then we have the moved version of it or the transformed version of it, which is called the pre-image. Okay. So every transformation starts with a pre-image and ends in an image. Pre-image, image, okay? Now, usually, again, like I said, it starts at the pre-image and it ends with the image. So the points on the pre-image are the inputs, okay, this is where we start. They're the inputs for the transformation and the points on the image are the outputs. So this is where we end for the transformations. Move this up a bit, just like that. Okay, um, I wanna pause here real quick. Um, any questions so far to clarify any ideas that's not sitting well with us that you heard me say, but you're like, huh, I just totally missed that. Anything that, that we wanna clarify before we go into start talking about translations. I will give you guys a moment to either write in the chat or unmute and talk. Okay. Okay, so let's start talking about translations and hopefully if you have questions, you'll actually say them or speak up or ask them. My chat is open. Um, yes. Are pre-images and images the same because it was saying for the original figure it'd be called the pre-image. I don't understand what that means. So in the original, it was, so the original figure that you're given, right? So usually with transformations, you're given an image like this or like a segment or the triangle that we saw in our warm up, right? So the original image would have been triangle um, ABC. So that would be our pre-image. When you move it and you then put in the moved version or the translated or transformed version, that then becomes the image. So your starting is your pre-image, the ending is called the image. Um, and usually with three out of four of these transformations, right? I mentioned at the very beginning, we have translations, 
reflections, rotations, and dilations, right? For three out of four of those, the translations, the reflections, and the rotations, your, your pre-image and your image are exactly the same thing. They are identical. They're congruent to each other in size and in shape. So if you started with a triangle, you're going to end with a triangle. Um, if you started with a, a segment that's five units long, you're going to end with a segment that's five units long. Okay. Um, dilations is the only one that changes the size of the image. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. No problem. Okay. So um, a translation, let's talk about translations, the first one. Okay, this is called the slide. This is called the slide because it's pretty much like sliding an image from different parts, okay, and in different positions. Okay, so that's called, the trans, translation is a slide transformation. A translation moves every point of a figure the same distance in the same direction. So every single point, if it's going to move five to the right and three up, then every single point on there is going to move five to the right and three up. Just like in our warm up, every single point moved two down, right? So a translation moves every point of a figure the same distance in the same direction. More specifically, a translation maps or moves the pre-image points, okay? So in this case, our pre-image points are gonna be PQ, segment PQ here, okay? Along some vector, right? And remember our vector was H comma K to the image points in this case, P prime and Q prime. Again, P with a little apostrophe there, this is P prime, Q with a little apostrophe is Q prime. Okay. So the little apostrophe there means prime. So I want to give you guys an example here. Okay, I want to give you guys an example here. So let's take a look. Um, if you'll notice here really quickly, okay, um, we have our PQ, our, our pre-image points here, and we have our P prime and Q prime. I'm going to make a few modifications here very quickly. Okay, you have this being added to A and B. But in reality, this A and B are our H and K. So if we start off with our coordinates X and Y, whatever our H is in our vector, we are going to be adding to the X's because that's the horizontal component. Whatever our K is, we are going to be adding to our Y's because that is our vertical components. Okay. So then what does that actually look like? What do you mean, Miss K? That looks like a bunch of letters. So what does that have to do with numbers? Okay, let's talk. Let's do an example here. Okay. So it says the vertices of triangle ABC are given as A at 0, 3, B at 2, 4, and C at 1, 0. Translate triangle ABC using the vector 5, comma, negative 1. Okay. The first thing we want to do is we want to actually graph our pre-image. Our pre-image is triangle ABC. So A is at 0, comma, 3. So that's X and Y. So 0 on the X, 3 on the Y. So here is A, okay, and uh, we're going to label this, this is A. B is at 2 comma 4, so starting at 0 again, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 up. 
So that's going to be my things right there. Right there. So that's my B. And my C is at 1, 0. So that's going to be at 0, 0, 1 to the right, and 0 up or down. So here's my C right there. And I'm going to just connect my the sides of my triangle, A, B, and C here. And there we go. Okay. Now, in a vector, right, the signs tell us which way to move. So if it's positive, that means the horizontal component is telling us to go to the right. And if, if my Y is positive, then it's telling me to go up for the vertical component. If my horizontal component is negative, it's telling me to go left. If my vertical component is negative, it's telling me to go down. So this vector here, okay, let me open some more space for me so I can move my paper. This vector here, of um, five comma negative one is telling me to go five to the right because that's my horizontal component and it's positive, okay? And it's telling me to go one down. Okay, so that's my vertical component, okay? And it's down because it's negative, okay? So I could very simply take every single one of these points right here and count five to the right and one down. So if I start at A, I can go one, two, three, four, five to the right, one down. That means my A prime should end up right over here. And I'm going to label it A prime. That's my image A. Here's my pre-image A. This is my image A. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for B and C, every point that's on the triangle. So B here, one, two, three, four, five to the right, one down. And where? how do I know where to move? My vector is telling me right there. Okay, my vector is telling me exactly which way to move, and how much to move, direction and magnitude. Same thing with C. One, two, three, four, five, one down. Here's my C prime now, my image. Connect these guys. And there is my pre-image and my image of my triangle. Okay, now once I do this, I can easily get these points for A prime, B prime, and C prime, okay? And um, I can figure out what these points are. But let's say I didn't have graph paper, okay? Let's say I didn't have graph paper and I wanted to figure out the points with algebra, okay? So you can easily do that because A prime, is just my point of A combined with my vector, okay? So I have my zero and my three here. And I'm leaving all this space because I'm gonna do something to it, okay? So for each one of my, my Im image points, I'm gonna take my original point here. Oh, wait, I need to give myself some space there. Where did my whiteout go? Okay. Giving myself some space there. My apologies. Okay, so B prime here. And my B starts as a two comma four. So I have two here, comma four. Close that. Okay. And then I'll do my C prime right next to it, right over here. And my C starts at one comma zero. So one, leaving some space, zero, leaving some space, closing it, okay? So why am I leaving space? Okay, this is where I'm gonna be doing this guy here, where I take my X and my Y for each point and I add my H and my K from the vector. 
So over here, my h is five for my vector. So to get my a prime, I'm taking my original x and y, and I'm adding h to the x, so plus uh, my vector, plus five. And I'm gonna do that for every single one of these points with x. So plus five, plus five for the x. So every single one of my pre-image x's, the zero, the two, and the one, I add my horizontal component of five, okay? And then for every single one of my y's, the three, the four, and the zero, I'm now going to add a negative one. So this is gonna be plus negative one, plus negative one, plus negative one to the y's. And I'm simply going to simplify them. So then a prime will now become five, zero plus five is five, comma, three plus a negative one, that's like three minus one. So that'll become five comma two. So my, my a prime, my image is at five comma two. And if I check it here, one, two, three, four, five, two up, that's exactly where I'm at. I do the same thing for B. B prime will be at two plus five is seven, comma, four plus a negative one, that's four minus one. So that's at seven comma three. Okay. So again, if I were to check this, I have seven comma three right up there. And then my C prime, lastly, one plus five is at six and zero plus a negative one is at negative one. So my C prime is at six comma negative one. So six comma negative one right there. All right. Okay, so there's also another way to express translations, okay? And it's, uh, it's very similar to what we just did here, okay? So there's also a very good, another way of expressing these translations and it's, it's in coordinate form, okay? So this was in component form and we were given our vector in component form Okay, in this situation, we're being given our vector in coordinate form, where you're given it in your, with your X and your Y. So in this situation, we have graph the image and give its coordinates of a quadrilateral ABCD with vertices A at negative one, two, B at negative one, five, C at four and six, D at four and two, with the translation of every x, y goes to x plus three, y minus one. Okay, every x, y goes to x plus three and y minus one. Now, this three and this minus one, these are our, this is our vector. Okay, this is our h and this is our k. So our vector here, our horizontal component is three, and our vertical component here is a negative one. They're just giving it to us in, in the form of like the coordinate form with already the coordinates in there, okay? So in order to get the, the quadrilateral, first you wanna graph our quadrilateral, the original one. Okay, I'm gonna move this down and do that right there. Okay, so I'm gonna graph our, we're gonna graph our quadrilateral, negative two and one, negative, nope, yeah, negative one and two, my bad. Some dyslexia there. Um, there we go, that's A, B is at negative one and five. 
see is that four in comma six. So four, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's C. And then D is at four and four comma two. Right there. Okay. So I connect my dots here. These are the quadrilateral, so it's four-sided. Oh, forgot to label that one. Okay, there's my quadrilateral. Okay. Now I want to move every single point. Okay. Um, three. Is this right or left? Three right or left? To the right. Three to the right. Good. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay. And this this for the Y, um, I'm gonna call on someone here. For the Y, um, Jasmine. This is one up or down. Jasmine? Okay, choosing someone else. Mariel. One up or down? It's a negative one. Oh, or down. Down. Okay, since it's a negative, you're going down. Okay, so this is going to be my bad. I, I was circling it with my mouse and you weren't being able to see it. Yeah, so it's going to be one down, right? Because it's that, that negative one. This was write three because it was a positive three there, okay? So I can take each one of these points and I can go three to the right and then one down, three to the right, one down, three to the right, one down, and yada, or I can figure out my points. So it's kind of going the reverse way here, right? I can figure out what A prime is and B prime and C prime and D prime by just plugging in my X and my Y into each one of each into this and getting each one of my points here. So it's kind of like a formula for me. Um, so I can plug in, I can take this, right, for my A prime, right? I have my plus three and my minus one. And for my A prime, I'm gonna take the coordinates from my A. So negative one for the X and two for the Y. And then I simplify, negative one plus three is positive two. So my A prime is two, two minus one. So my A prime is at two comma one. Okay, I can do the same thing for my B. Again, take my X and my Y. My X for B was negative one. So then I have plus three, five for my Y minus one. So I'm using this as my formula to find my new points. And I'm getting the X and the Y from the original, the pre-image point right there. So negative one plus three, again, I have two. This time five minus one is a four. So my B, my A and my B are at two, one and two, four. I want you guys to find C and D. Find C and D and privately message me C and D.
Okay, I wanna see participation from as many people as possible. Okay, um, and if you're not trying, um, I just wanna let you know, I, I will be probably sending messages home or making phone calls home for a lack of participation. Very good on this, Leon. Good job. Graph it. Okay, still waiting from everyone else, really. But I shall be patient. Gabriel, I just want C prime and D prime, please. Okay, thank you for those of you that participated. Okay, so uh, to find C prime and D prime, okay, again, you're using this as your formula right here. Okay, you're using that as your formula. Almost Maya. So that means that you're gonna take each X and add it by three, each Y and subtract it by one. So to find C prime, you're gonna take the X and the Y from C. So four and six. Okay, you're gonna add three 
to the x. You're going to subtract 1 from the y. Okay, so 4 plus 3 is 7. 6 minus 1 is 5. And lastly, for d prime, okay, for d prime, same thing. We take the x and the y from our pre-image d. So that's 4 and 2. And we take our x and we add it by 3. Notice it's the same number every time for this, this set. And then we take our y and we subtract it by 1. So 4 plus 3 is 7 once more. 2 minus 1 is 1. So your images for C and D are at 7, 5, and 7, 1. So 7, 5, right here, and 7, 1, right here. So this is C prime, and this is D prime. And we're going to connect our points. There we go. Okay. Um, flip it over. Um, I know many of you guys actually didn't participate, but can I get a response of a thumbs up or a thumbs down um, as to how many of us got those correct? Thumbs up if you got both of those correct. Thumbs down um, if you missed one or more. Okay. All right. Okay, so if we go ahead and flip it over here. Okay. We will have uh, our top portion here. Okay, this is called write a rule. Okay, our directions are to write a rule for the translation of triangle ABC to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, okay? So when we say write a rule, what we are talking about is in our previous, in our previous example, right? This was our rule here. 
This was our coordinate form, but it's called the rule. It tells us how to take each point from the pre-image and how to translate to the image, okay? So they want us to write that rule, okay? We wanna write that rule for the given tr translation here that happened. So notice which points are the original points and which points are the prime points. Okay, so if you'll notice, we have the little primes on this triangle here. That's that, those are our primes right there. So that means we're starting at this triangle. Okay, we're starting at triangle ABC. And we're moving toward triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. This guy right here. And we want to write the rule that tells us how to move from this triangle to this triangle. So that means each of these points, x, y, we need to write the rule to tell how much to move each x and each y and in what direction. So we can do that, but it's kind of like looking for the slope, okay? You're looking at how, where am, how am I moving to get from A to A prime? How am I moving to get from B to B prime, C to C prime, okay? So we can go ahead and take a look here. So let's start at A, okay? So X is the first one that we wanna figure out. So that means right or left, okay? So we're gonna count. I'm going from A to A prime, because that's where the A prime is. So that means I'm going one, two, three, four, and I went four to the left, okay? I went four to the left, which means it's probably gonna be a negative four because I went one, I'm not counting the first point. The first point where A is is not one, that's zero, okay? And then I take one step to the left, two steps to the left, three steps to the left, four steps to the left, and that would be four steps to the left right there. Now I'm not on A yet, right? But I'm like right below A, which means in order to get on A, I have to go up one, right? If I go up one, then that gets me directly on A prime. So that means I went up one, and if I'm going up one, right? So I went four left, and up one. So that means my horizontal component is gonna be a negative four, and my vertical component is gonna be a positive one, okay? Now, before you write this down in your rule, you really wanna double check with the rest of your points. So B to B prime, okay, starting at B, that's zero, one, two, three, Four to the left, one up, that confirms. From C, one, two, three, four to the left, one up, that confirms that one. So then my rule will be that every X, Y from here gets moved four to the left and up one. So every X will be subtracted by four and added by one. Okay. Any questions on that one? Can I get a thumbs up or thumbs down on how we feel about writing that rule? How we figured out four to the left and up one. Okay. Thumbs up or thumbs down on how we feel about figuring out the rule here. Thumbs up if we feel like we understand it. Thumbs down if we feel like we don't understand it.
Hey guys, can I please get a response? I'm not feeling this lack of participation here. It's either a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whichever one it is, it's okay. Just give me a response. If you don't understand, that's okay. Just put a thumbs down, but everybody's got to participate. Exactly. I don't need you to tell me that you understand things perfectly because your test tells me otherwise. I need you to tell me when you have questions so I know what to go back and review. And I need you to ask those questions because this ain't working. And if you're not putting anything, you're missing out on our participation points. And believe me, I know I'm behind on putting in participation points, but I have, I'm keeping track. And when I update them, you're going to be like, holy crap, where'd those come from? And you're going to have a bunch of zeros that you're not going to be able to make up. All right, thank you. So let's go ahead and try this one out, okay? Remember you're writing the rule from the pre-image to the image. So you're always counting from the original to the, the prime. That's the direction you're counting in, okay? That's the direction that you should be counting in there. Okay, once you think you have the rule, put it in the chat. Okay, Gabriel, so far so good. Um, your K is incorrect, Gabriel. Um, Maya, are you giving me the new point? Don't know, Gabriel. All right.
So again, the rule, okay, the rule is looks like this. It's this form, x y two x plus or minus a number, comma y plus or minus a number. So I'm going to set that up here. So x comma y. Literally, this is the setup for the rule. X plus or minus the number, Y plus or minus the number. So to go ahead and figure out my, what's gonna be added or subtracted to my A, I start at the original A and I'm going to A prime. So horizontally, I go one, two, I'm right above A prime. So I went two to the, Two to the right here, the so two right. Okay. And then I'm going to figure out the how many I need to. It looks like I'm going to go be going down. So how many do I go down? I go one, one down. So two to the right, one down. Okay. So that means my H is two, positive or negative. Is it going to be a positive two or a negative two if I'm going to the right? Okay, I'm really hoping you guys are saying positive two. Okay. And then one down. Okay, that means my K is going to be one. And if I'm going down, that means it's going to be a negative one. So that means in my rule, my final rule here, it's going to be x, y, 2, every x plus 2, every y minus 1. And I'm done. All right. Um, so you have homework. You have an exit slip that you should be able to complete, even with the notes that we didn't do. OK. Um, and of course, I expect you guys to upload the notes that you've done thus far. Okay. Um, again, I have tutoring on Thursdays from 2.15 to 3.15. If any part of today was difficult or you didn't understand, I expect you to be at tutoring. All right. Okay, guys. Have a good day. I will see you on Wednesday. All right, bye. 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 Bye, Callie.